dun 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 oh <laughs> oh there we go there's the episode thumbnail there we go okay <laughs> welcome back to another getting projects done we're continuing our work on the McFarlane Primaris Hellblaster Marine we are doing a custom chapter for this uh, marine I've done a bit of sculpting and such on it. So I've sculpted icons and things like that around everything. I've uh, begun the painting process by priming in Steinal Res Gray and then using Tamaya Flat Red as the base tone across everything. So all the parts of the Marine are uh, primed, other th or base coat, I should say, other than uh, the, the Goon. The Goon is just primed right now. But otherwise, yeah, so that's where that's at. So, and of course, we are going to get work, back to work. We're going to start laying down some shading. Uh, man, there's all sorts of ways we can go about the shading. I think for the most part, I'm just going to start laying down some deeper brown tones onto the armor. And for that, I'm going to use uh, XF64. This is Tamaya's Red Brown. So it's kind of got like this deeper tone. We're going to use this in the airbrush. Uh, we're going to thin it down with some thinner because I don't want it applied um, too heavily. I want this applied uh, more like a thin glaze on top of the surface. So a little bit of the red still kind of comes through. So that's what we're going to do with that. Disco, what's up, Chris? Hi. Despite, uh, hey, despite the live streams, your Twitch channel shows offline. Um... I don't know why I'm I'm streaming, aren't I? I'm live. It says I'm live, but you know what though? Uh, if I go, I can't do. How come I can't do that from here? Usually I can um, show myself, I guess. Cause usually I have a thing where I can show I'm online. Oops, shit. Clicking buttons now. And show. Nope. Nope. Show I'm on. Yeah. It shows I'm online. Oops. Oh, cut that out. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. That's kind of weird. Maybe it's just you. Maybe. Maybe it is. Maybe not. Who knows? Nothing's perfect. There's no. There's no perfect solutions in these uh, c scenarios. All right. So to get the ball rolling, I'm just going to move some of these parts around. We're going to use some XA or X20A thinner. I'm gonna load up my rinse here with a little bit of iso alcohol. This is a 70% I'm using here. So it's not too, too harsh. Not that I'm really worried about that. It's just, you know, you know. So yeah, we we'll grab a little bit of alcohol, get it ready to go. Got another little synthetic brush here and take our brown. I've already put it on the mixer for a little bit. And to apply the paint, we are going to use a renegade chrome from Bajur. This the whole reason for this is because this has got a finer needle on it, and I can turn the PSI down and be a little bit more accurate as to where I want to place this stuff. I'm normally I would just kind of like you know spray it almost like a, a how we do like xenophil type of uh, technique where we just kind of spray straight up. Here though, I am going to be a little bit more deliberate, try and place it in some areas. Uh, I'm not too worried if it hits other areas that are still kind of red um, because we can clean that up later and we most likely will be applying more like a highlight color uh, when we get to the highlighting phase. I don't know if we'll do if we'll get to that today. We may. It all depends, I guess. Uh, I just need to check my PSI. Yeah, turn down just a bit more. I'm coming down to about 15 PSI. That's where I'm at. All right, so I'm going to take a little bit of brown. We're going to pour that into the brush. Now, the uh, Renegade Chrome does have a smaller cup than, say, um, you know, like the Patriot 105. So we're not going to be able to put too much paint in here. Uh, probably only about a third of the way of the paint because I'm going to add uh, a fairly healthy amount of thinner. Give that a thorough mix. And then, of course, we're going to start getting to work. So we've already shaken up our Tamaya Disco. That's better. Yeah. Kevin Cabal, your sculpting looks awesome, Chris. Well, thank you. Uh, I'm not much of a sculptor. 
I, it is not one of my strengths, but I do what I can. I do what I can. So first things, I'm going to get started on this backpack here, just because, because I'm looking at it. There we go. Um, yeah, we'll just pour it. Pouring it will be fine. See, that's a little bit too much. That's okay. Just gonna wipe the bowl. And I don't know, is it me? Or is the smell of Tamaya paints just too damn fun? Or is it just me? Might be just me. Might be just me. Grabbing a fairly generous amount of thinner. I'm gonna slap that. How much thinner? Um, Probably closer to like, I don't want to say a 50-50, but it's pretty, you know, it's probably like a third. Yeah, I would say more like a third. Get a quick little rinse. Rinsey rinse. go all right let's get to work yeah we're just starting right into it today we're, we're only like what six minutes into the stream and we are already painting i'm not even not even doing it well i i did get something in that's going to help with this project but we'll talk about that later is not having the quite desire effect that I'm looking for. It is shading it, but it's not like, it's not giving me a deeper value, which is what I was look, more looking for. okay though once we get to the next phase of the shading we'll be okay I'm not too worried about hitting the round orby parts because those are going to get uh, painted metallic anyway so Oop, too much there oops Again, I'm not too concerned with any areas that I know are going to be metallic. So like the vents and stuff like that, those are going to be metallic. I'm not too worried about those. Yeah, I did want it a little bit darker, but so far it seems okay. I mean, we're getting some different values going on. It's also having the added effect of um, kind of pulling back the red, making it a little less intense, which is fine. Basically, I'm just laying this in and all the shading points. But yeah. Something like that so far. Set that aside. Grab this one.
there. It's kind of funny how it just kind of desaturates it all, right? It's more along the lines of what I'm looking for. Thermicus. Hey everybody, happy Friday. Hope you all able to enjoy your favorite beverage later. Chris thought the color scheme is chef kiss and better than I thought. Thank you. Kim, hey, 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 hey. Kim, uh, my order came in. So I'm going to show that off there in a bit. We'll see if it's, uh, if we're hopeful about uh, the, um, the scale and everything. Like, the worst that happens is it doesn't work out, you know, and look for another solution, you know. I'm not too worried about it. Yeah, it almost has the effect of kind of giving the impression of more like a dust or dirt. It's almost like a, a weathering phase almost, which is kind of interesting. A little bit more contrast under the breast. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Oh, the camoli. Karenski, three or thirty fifty. 
Thank you for subscribing with the Prime. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. Um, yeah. Hopefully you um, enjoy the stream. Hopefully you enjoy the channel. And uh, feel free to ask questions. I welcome <laughs> just about any and all questions. <laughs> Yeah, that's looking all right. Yeah, I, at first I wasn't too sure about how this brown was going to play out, but now I'm 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 starting to feel it. I'm starting to feel it. So hopefully, hopefully, uh, let's do the helmet next. Let's do something fun. Whoop! Almost knocked over my legs. With the helmet, um, yeah, it's going to be mostly an upward direction, I think. Yeah, you see what I mean? Like how the how the brown I don't know how well it shows up on camera here, but the brown is adding a bit of shadow, which is what I want, but it's a similar value as the red. And so it actually is like it's changing the value, but it actually makes it feel more like a dust. You know what I mean? Like you know, like it's more like a weathering. It's interesting. I'm not I'm not hating it or anything like that. It's interesting. Not quite what I was planning. I was I was initially going to use just like a, a clear uh, dark brown, uh, basically a, a, a number. But here I'm kind of having a little bit of fun here. And I think when I was laying down this base coat, I was mentioning that I probably should have did this brown first before laying the red on. Here on these insides of the pad. Oh, jeez, Luis. Lunar, be prepared. Be prepared. Lunar, be prepared. Thanks for the uh, follow. For the follow. Uh, Thermocase, those alerts still surprise me. Yeah. Well, because I turned the audio so that, you know, it pipes into your systems a lot louder. So, yeah. It's just me being a dick, is all. <laughs> Disco, I just tried out this new Series 7 number one by Winds and Newton, and I'm fighting it all over over the place i think it's just a lemon of a brush uh a number one yeah i i like number ones in in natural sable hairs um d are you in the habit of taking care of your brushes uh like using brush soap to clean your brushes between sessions because that that plays a big factor especially in 
uh, really supple hairs like you those used by like Windsor Newton and Artis Opus and all these other names. icon I think I want to lay just a little bit of shadow under the icon if I can do that now I realize that we are going to be uh, making the icon gray or white but this is just to create a little bit of shadow in that area come on Come on. Oh, laid too much down. Shit. Oops. Oh, well, that's okay. It's given it a very interesting look. We're going to push that contrast a little further, of course, but so far I am liking this. <clears throat> um, Kim, I just built the Blood Angel red. I did up the hull red and added some more, more flat red till it came to pure flat red. Looks great. Disco, yes. Uh, this one, as I paint, it loosens, loose, loses tip and splits. I have another. I'm going to try and see if the results are the same. Yeah. Yeah. If it's splitting, yeah, you might need to condition the br uh, bristles a little bit more. God damn it. There we go. Do the other shoulder pad. Dry tip. Uh, da, 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 da. Kim, too much liquid in the bristles will make its uh, sable brushes splay out. Yes, and also the other thing as well is like on your on your brush. If you're dunking your brush too far into your paint and the paint is, is all the way up to the metal, the furl, yeah, that will cause the bristles to splay outwards as well. So don't do that.
Kim, if it's a new brush, you should not need to do anything with it. Damn, I think I got... I think I need to try and get a replacement for this lemon brush. If it's fucked up from them, uh, you can get a new one. Or if it's a less serious, uh, at least it's a serious vendor, yeah. bad not bad so far so good god dang it can't put, can't put this pig in the hole <laughs> oh my god pain in my rump in the rump I'm just doing most of this shoulder pad in this brown just because, you know, it gets uh, hidden anyway, so I'm not too worried about it. It is yielding a very interesting look. On camera, it looks dark, but it's it's almost a similar value. Like, like if I'd have took um, like pigments and dusted the model with it, this is the kind of look I think I would get. So very interesting. Anyway, I'm digging it so far. So far, <laughs> you never know though. I might might just lose my patience and then just scrap the whole thing. Uh, Karenski, this is like ASMR. <laughs> yeah, I suppose to. I don't know. People people tell me about ASMR all the time. I should do like more ASMR type streaming and stuff and I don't know about that.
So with this color, basically, I'm just laying this in just again to create the shadow. Because again, the shoulder pad's gonna sit on top of that. It's barely gonna be visible, but yeah. Come in. There we go. Bend, damn it. Bend. There we go. All right. That'd be some shading. Onto the legs, and then we can move on to another color. Yeah, we're probably... Man, I, I thought I put too much in here, but no, we're going at a pretty good clip. Disco, yeah, I ordered both via Amazon. I'll make the call, yeah. All right, uh, yeah, I guess we'll start with this knee joint here. Okay, this is get covered up by another paint afterwards.
Sorry, I just had to check to see if it was hitting the right spots. Yeah, it almost looks more like a weathering, eh? A little bit. Kind of. Sort of. I'm liking the the overall like value change. It's almost like to the eye, it almost looks like if I had added almost like not quite a shabti bone but a light brown color more like bane blade brown in citadel if i added it to the red and started creating like a weathering from it that's what this reminds me of it's not quite what i had planned but i'm okay biggest important thing is is to always uh roll with the punches as it were roll with the punches is this the last bit hey yeah this is the last bit we can get to some other shading sweet time we had 40 minutes in oh yeah we got plenty of time today So you may or may not have noticed as I airbrush, I tend to start the air away from the project and then bring it in. And that's just so that any times that you're kind of like, you know, working the trigger back and forth, you can get like a little excess amount of paint caught up in the nozzle. And if you start the air right at your project, that little splooch, you know, can come flying out at your project. So I'm just taking care of some dry tip here. Dry tip, dry tip. All right. It's actually kind of fun. It's kind of fun. So far, I've been having a lot of fun painting these larger scale, larger format figures. I don't know if it's because I'm getting old. It's just easier on my eyes or what, but yeah, it's a lot of fun.
for a lot of you out there who are who might be a little bit bored with painting armies and you know just painting yeah these are fun little things to try give them a try you never know Oh, the knee. <laughs> I forgot about the knee. My knee! done with that color I think we're done with this phase yeah it's time to move on to bigger and brighter things let's uh, kick the rest of that out Oops, shit. it's running down the sides oh no oh yeah the paint is starting to get gummy on the sides oh shit I didn't grab a paper towel Ugh. got a little brown on my finger uh, what does that mean? Nah, anyway. <laughs> uh, Kim, yeah, it's a super nice thing to do with uh, always painting 28 mil. Yes, I 100% uh, agree. You know, just, just taking a break from the usual stuff, especially for a lot of you out there who are, you know, might be feeling that, that instance of burnout. Yeah. I highly recommend taking on a project similar to something like this. Just do something outside the norm. Of what you normally paint and you know just grabbing some of this alcohol Oop, geez. you know something outside the norm just you know something for yourself right just to try out different things try out different techniques or just for something different you know it doesn't always have to be about space marines and stuff like that right at least i don't think so i don't know I could be wrong. I probably am. <laughs> it's very likely I'm wrong. There's a high degree of likelihood that I'm wrong. Actually, I'm going to back feed this a little bit here. Not back feed, but I'm just using my pipette to just flush the alcohol around. 
might sound a little funny. But I assure you, there's nothing funny going on. Not that I think, anyway. For a paper towel. Do, do, do. Do, 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 do. There we go. Okay. One more little flush of alcohol. I'm okay with it being this, you know, this brown like this. I'm fine. I'm not too worried. The next color we're going to move over to uh, kind of finishes glossy. So it's definitely going to be very apparent on the figure once we start doing, using it. I probably could use like a matte medium and knock the shine out of it. I usually don't. I mean, once, all, once it's all said and done, I'm probably going to apply a... Um, uh, a semi-gloss onto this figure just to give it a little bit of protection but I don't want it to be um, shiny but a semi-gloss uh, especially like if I do like you know the interior ribbings of joints do those in a black in a matte and then have like a semi-gloss on the armor just to give the armor a bit of you know um, I don't know a bit more integrity as it were like the impression of it, I should say. <laughs> but I don't want it glossy. I don't want him to look like he's brand new out of the out of the factory. Kim, I have n uh, I never have painter fatigue or burnout. I am way too much into the painting, but it's fun to do different stuff. Yes. Others might have a little burnout at least if they like to paint between 4 to 10 hours a day every day. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, everybody's, you know, different, right? So no, nope, that's not the one I want. Yeah, this is what I want. Why was that sticky? Oh, it's all sticky. Anyway, next I'm going to use some raw umber hue. This is golden transparency. This is the older bottles. Um, they have newer bottles. This is designed for paintbrush, markers, airbrush, all sorts of uses. Now with this, I am going to reinforce some of the um, <clears throat> some of the um, darkest points. So basically, like on the leg here, we're going to apply it more on under, under this line as opposed to up here. Oh, I forgot those vents there. Oh well. But I am kind of curious to see how this looks on top of the brown. I'm not going to use it like on the face here. But I might use it on this uh, interior curvature. So, yeah. Disco. Amazon is awesome. Just wish they weren't so brutal on local businesses. Well, of course. move these parts over here again so we're not getting too much overspray on stuff so yeah this is a um, water-based acrylic paint line so we don't have to use like alcohol to clean it out or anything like that we just use water and such we're gonna be using this fairly minimally uh, if this has an equivalent uh, the equivalent would be more like um, Agrax Earthshade from Citadel it's that similar color like it gives you that it's that really dark transparent kind of brown it's 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 umber right? i mean that's that's the name of the color so <laughs> agrax earthshade is just umber <clears throat> shouldn't take too much but i'm just gonna put, use a some you know amount like that in there it's not a lot oh, it's getting all my fingers the fun stuff with with this color though as I often like to use it like a shade wash, and I'll turn this color into a shade wash, effectively giving me something like Agrax or shade. So, you know. So on the backpack, it's really just on these under seams and in the corners and stuff like that that I want to use this. It also has the added benefit of deepening up the red. 
because it's a dark brown and it's a transparency so it allows a lot of that red to read through it again it's really nice I mean like how how deep and dark the color now it's kind of hard to tell because it does finish with a gloss so the light will play on that surface like if we hit this with a matte it would obviously tone right down but yeah see how it's like glossy yeah that's the way it finishes so if that's not for you i mean like it's not a big deal if it finishes glossy because like i said you can always um go over it with a matte and it'll knock that shine right off See how that curvature, we just added just a little bit of a shadow to it now. And it gives us a nice, deep, rich looking red now, right? Mainly because we're pushing the contrast as well. So, yeah. I definitely like that a lot better now yeah yeah I like that I'm okay with all that When you get into these kinds of situations where you are going between layers of paint, some finish matte, some finish glossy, you kind of have to just trust in your process, you know, for your end results and not go, oh my God, you know, this is matte, this is gloss. It's throwing me off on how it's going to look. You know what I mean? Like just trust in the process. Some of you that might not make a lot of sense, but. It's not really necessary to fill this area in with color, but I'm doing it anyway.
go. Again, we're just building contrast. That's all we're doing. Okay with all that. Next. Um bum 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 disco. I often paint as work and my wife will permit. I love it. Cool. Kim, one more leg panel to chip and the McFarland Blood Angel is almost done. Going to do a few streaks with the oils, and then I got to go finish up the weapon. You can always unify the shine of the different colors anytime with a varnish, anytime under the process. Yes. I like using this to deepen up that color. It just looks kind of cool. Me likey. Me likey. Deepening up some of these tones here. Cranking this to maximum shadows. <laughs> Just looking for that nice little shading. that yeah that's not too bad mostly okay with all this so far it's all going according to plan unless of course i catastrophically mess something up which is always a possibility Now the bravery test. I just want to create just a little bit deeper tone on these uh, hip armor. Just a slightly darker value at the high point. It's a bit like 
um, you know, when you see a non-metallic metal, it's that kind of idea, style. It's a little bit more intense there than it is there. So let's try and even that out. Again, this is usually about the point where I mess something up. <laughs> yeah, that feels pretty even. I don't know how well that shows up on camera, but yeah, it's pretty even. Do, do, do. Oh, we're starting to get low. We're starting to get low. We'll have to refill once, uh, probably once we're done this torso bit. Probably, probably. little contrast under there Yeah, so far so good. I am okay with all this. This ring, this collar will be black. I am thinking. having fun I think so I think we're having fun aren't we
all this side. Yeah. Not entirely sure why I'm really kind of fussing over these little spots because I don't think you really kind of see them once everything's all assembled. But, you know, just for completeness sake, just for my OCD. Throw a few more drops in there. Yes, that looks like a lot more than just a few drops, but, you know, you get the point. All right, <coughs> moving on. Um, ba -dee -dee -doo, ba -dee 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 Let's do the helmet. Come on. See if I can get right up in these eyelids here. Yeah, something like that. That's looking all right. You guys can't see it that well, but yeah. Again, it looks funny because of the gloss, but no worries. No worries. Let's jump over to another shoulder pad. That. Yeah. So far, so good. Okay. A little bit of shadowing on the icon.
darker than what I wanted, but it's okay. Yeah, it is a bit darker, but that, that's okay. We can correct that later. It's a little bit intense. Yeah, that's fine. Do the arms. Need a boo boo. A boo boo.
Do 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 do. left just the legs just the legs kim put some pics in the work in progress thread to discord i am pretty happy with the squad markings that i made homemade stencils to do cool cool story bro <laughs> do 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 Let us continue our efforts. One leg, a two leg, a two. Dry tip. Dry tip's messing up my aim. Dry tip.
tip. Dry tip. Whew. I think we're getting a fair amount done on this thing, are we? Aren't we? Yeah. I think so. I think we're getting a fair amount done. All right, I think we're done with the shading. So, let's take a little bit of a break. We are going to do some cleaning. And I can reflect upon the destruction I have wrought on my figure. <laughs> I'm just wiping the bowl right now. Got to got to keep your bowl clean. Do, 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 do. You know what? Let's for gigs. I'm gonna spritz just a bit of alcohol, or maybe not a bit. Good deal now. Just to help break that down. And now let's flush with some water. Grab some water. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Any questions from anybody? Any comments? Smart ass remarks? Speak now or forever. Shut your pie hole. <laughs> Disco, working on this new number one Windsor Newton. Yeah? And how are you finding it? Is it the same thing? Because in my experience, with a number one Windsor Newton, it's got a good belly, good tips. Now, it's effing great. <laughs> now, you picked up a Windsor Newton uh, Series 7, or is it just a Windsor Newton brush, number one? It's a series seven, yeah. It's not the it's not the miniature, right? It's like the regular series seven, because there's two different series sevens. There's miniature and then there's regular. Because I have uh, this the miniature series. Let me see. Do I have one handy? Oh, uh, my precision brush is over there. Uh, let me see here if I can find a series seven. Because the miniatures, right, they have, oh, fuck, I'm dropping all sorts of stuff now. Come on, come on. Oh, there's that brush. <laughs> uh, anyway, okay, hold on here. I keep most of my, um, my uh, precision brushes in this tin here. Uh, I got Rubelobs. This is like a, a Rubelov number one right here. I like this one here. It's got a really long point. It's more like a liner. It's really good. I don't use it too often. Because most of the work I get done is with this Artist Opus number one. I like this one. Uh, yeah, here's my Series 7. I've got one right here. Yeah. And so this is the miniature. And the miniature just means it's got a shorter bristle length. I don't know how well that shows up on camera, but you can see it's got a really short bristle. It's really good for doing stuff like uh, lines and eyes and stuff like that. The majority of my work, I even do eyeballs with this brush. This is uh, an old heavy metal standard brush. 
and I use this one quite a bit. I even do eyeballs with this brush. And this is a number one. Yeah, once, th once this Artist Opus brush, this number one dies, uh, I have another one here, handy. But yeah, I like these number ones. They're really good. And they're handy. Oops, just making sure I didn't crimp a hair. But yeah, and when you have like brushes, I got another larger one as well. I, I've got zeros and double zeros. Like I got a bunch of the Artist Opus ones. I hardly ever use them. Um, the Precision ones, I hardly ever use them just because I find that that older heavy metal brush and the Artist Opus number one does all the work that I needed to do. So yeah. Uh, Disco, no mention on miniature on the cylinder came in. Yeah, well, the miniatures, ha like I said, have shorter bristles, and the regular Series 7s have, like, longer bristles. There's two different ones. Uh, Kim, Series 7 sucks ass, in my opinion, but I don't like shot bristles. Same with Artist Opus Series M. Series 7 sucks ass? Um, I don't know. I, I would disagree on that one. I've been using Series 7 for a very long time. About 15? Almost 20 years? Yeah, I've been using Series 7. Really good. But I only ever use them for precision work. I don't use them for, you know, a vast majority of stuff. Most of the time, like most of my painting is with Citadel brushes. I just use Citadel brushes for a majority of painting. I mean, like they're fine. Like your base coating and, you know, blending stuff like that. Pff, they're fine. The only time you really want a good soft sable haired brush, you know, is when you're creating lines, uh, you're doing eyeballs and yeah, stuff like that. Uh, disco, uh, nope. Long bristles all day. Yeah. So that's just a regular series seven. The miniatures have shorter bristle lengths. Uh, the miniature series seven, not the normal series seven. I use the normal series seven a lot. Yeah. Uh, again, like I hardly ever use my miniature series sevens and it's really, if I really need to try and make a good point, like if I'm doing a dot, right? Like for an eyeball, really, that's about it. That's the only reason I use those. But I found that, uh, with like the artist opus number one or with that older heavy metal, uh, master's brush. Yeah, I can do eyeballs with those as well. So that's why I don't ever really use my Windsor, uh, Windsor Newtons. I even have this uh, Windsor Newton Series 7. I have this one here. This was special. Oh, shit. <laughs> it, says, it says way of the brush on it. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. But yeah, it says way of the brush. Hee hee hee. But yeah, this is like a, a three or a four, this brush, but it's nice. Never use it. <laughs> it's more of, it's more of an heirloom at this point. <laughs> but yeah. We au de bruche. Always bruche. All right. Um... We're going to take a little break. Uh, I'm not going anywhere. I'm just going to do a little bit more talking. Uh, Kim, I don't like short bristles. Uh, it all depends. Uh, like, like it's, they all have their place. They all, it, it's having a, the right tool at the right time. I mean, you know, when's it, when's it time to use, you know, a socket as opposed to a wrench, right? I mean, you know, two different tools is one better than the other. Not really, you know, it's just, particular tool for the job man but kim you know that right you already know that does this light on yeah so yeah i got that package in kim uh on your suggestion uh i found molds and i found them on amazon and you know i mean we're all sitting here shitting and hating on amazon but you know whatever <clears throat> Oof, you can just smell the COVID. <laughs> okay, so these are molds 
for uh, feathers. It, it was it's a three pack. Yeah, and it is this fluorescent pink. Made in China. Silicone Fordunt Fordunt Ferdinand mold cakes. Yeah, these are for like baking and stuff, but um, resin should work just fine in this. The only thing I was concerned about uh, with these was um, like because resin uh, has an exothermic reaction and it heats up. I don't know if you've ever played with like um, like resin, but yeah, it heats up. And if it's really, really dense mold, uh, it gets really, really warm. Like, to the point where it can scald you. But these are really, really thin. So these should not get too hot in the curing process. Now, the question is, are these feathers a good scale? Now, this one here, these seem pretty damn huge in comparison to the Marine, right? These ones here... They're pretty big, but it's not bad, because I'm just thinking like for the gun, right? I don't know if you guys can see this shit, okay, but anyway. Like on the gun, yeah, the gun is a little bit big, right? If, if there was a feather dangling off the gun, yeah, that would probably be a little bit too big. But this mold, now this is the uh, Kim, the, uh, that link you sent or posted in Discord, this is that same... Um, mold that uh, you had posted but I ma managed to find it on um, Amazon and that feather and that feather look good even this little feather over here but that feather looks really good and that feather looks really good and they look about like the right scale that I want right so if you look at it, yeah, I don't know how well that shows. Let me see if I can, if I can do this. Okay, let's open it up. Let's have a look. Yeah, it's just a regular soft silicone mold. They're designed for uh, cooking and such. They're uh, supposed to be food grade silicone. So if I wanted to eat whatever I was casting in this, uh, I'm not going to use. Um, green stuff i'm going to use resin i have resin and yeah i'm going to use resin for this because squishing green stuff most likely will distort the mold but yeah so these so i'm thinking that feather and that feather i don't know if you guys can see what i'm doing here yeah it's kind of upside down but that feather and that feather look like the right size and almost the right thickness i'm sure that it'll probably take a bit of cleaning up when I cast these, but yeah, you can kind of see to the helmet. Yeah, it's a little big, but that's okay. It's a little big, but you know, sci-fi reasons, right? Sci-fi reasons, even that little feather, that little feather looks really good too, right there. It's about that long. Yeah. Here, let me see if I can just focus here so for you guys. Uh, let's go here, let's go here. Here, let's go over here. No, nope, wrong one. It's just the focus to both there. So, here, let's see. Can we see these okay? Yeah. And so, in comparison to the helmet, that one there works pretty darn well. In fact, I'm thinking maybe that size for the helmet and these ones for the weapon. Right? Yeah. Is that in focus enough? Yeah enough so yeah um good call kim good call <laughs> so we'll give that a shot at some point i'll probably do that off camera i'm not going to do it on camera just because <laughs> i'll probably end up casting a huge a whole bunch um where am i here in the comments kim I did check the prices on the bigger series seven for my wife and her canvas painting. When you get up to size seven and eight, it's a hundred dollars plus. Yes. Yeah. They're expensive. Uh, heretic Scott, howdy. Being a busy day, currently chowing down and then back to finishing off these chaos Marines. Then it's onto a bigger project. I'm sure to send pics this time. 
since I know you like all like dangles. <laughs> yeah. Kim, sil uh, food grade silicone can take 250 Celsius. Yeah, the, well, the resin doesn't, I, at least I don't, I've never actually measured the temperature on re resin when it heats up. But like I've grabbed it like shortly after it, it's gone through that fast curing phase and it's hot. Like grab it, like grab the mold, especially in a thin wall, uh, thin wall mold. Yeah, you can feel the heat like, whoa, you know. Yeah, it's it gets hot. Herdic, nice shade of pink. Yeah, <laughs> it's fluorescent. Kim, food grade silicone is mostly better quality than the other stuff. Only problem is it uh, is that it's a bit soft and that's it. It's a huge eagle. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, eagle. I mean, you know, reasons. I mean, shit, we did this chest eagle on, on our skull, right? on here and you know i don't know <laughs> you know i don't know <laughs> some good reasoning there right <laughs> you know i don't know <laughs> you know no i don't know <laughs> it doesn't make any fucking sense <laughs> uh heretic scott super glue gets pretty hot as well in fact you can set it on uh set fire to set fire to shit with it if you're not careful or a pyromaniac i say i wasn't aware of that super glue getting really hot i've never noticed really huh i've never never noticed kim the resin under curing i mean oh yeah no no it, yeah like well even 70 80 degrees i mean that that's a hot that's hot man that's hot you just like to touch yeah you burning yourself. You burn yourself. All right. What's the next phase? Highlight? I mean, I might come in with a bit more pure red just to reestablish because I made a bit of a boo-boo on the shoulder pads. I was a little bit overzealous on the shadows there. And I think what I want to do is I want to apply a bit of red and come in and clean that edge. I could have just as easily masked that off but yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna come in and I'm just gonna spray at particular angles just to create those uh, initial highlights and just push some of that shadow back. Cause yeah, it's a little bit intense. On camera, it looks really dark. In person, yeah, it's still pretty, it's still pretty dark. <laughs> I was gonna say it's not that dark, but yeah, it's pretty dark. <laughs> so we're gonna jump back into the flat red uh, and then I think for a highlight, uh, we are going to use, should we do a little mixture? I don't want to under mix. Oh, should I be using my Patriot? Uh, no, because I want more control. Yeah. I want more control with this. Yeah. So I think, I think I'm gonna have to figure out how I want to, I'm trying to think of an easy ratio because like the, these um these these paints right like I pouring isn't terribly accurate and I, I like to have an accurate way of working out my color ratios right so oftentimes I will just use a brush and just dunk it in throw it into the airbrush right typically but yeah disco gotta run to a meeting gonna afk a few okay <laughs> Say hello to everybody in the meeting. <laughs> I think what we'll use... Um, should I use an orange? An orange? Yeah, I think we'll use orange. <laughs> the ancient color orange. Some of you might not be familiar with this color. Uh, it is what you get when you mix red and yellow. You get orange. <laughs> It's orange, uh, X6. I don't know if this is gloss or if this is matte. I'm suspecting this is going to finish with a gloss. Yeah, but I think that's what we'll do. We'll probably throw in, like, I'm going to throw a bunch of red in to the brush, take care of some highlights, like, or um, reestablish some of the base tone, uh, push some of the shadow back in some places, and then... Um, yeah, we'll add some orange to it. Kind of go for a bit of... Um, I would rather 
probably closer to a 50 50 so like equal parts of these and it should give us a good highlight value and that will be um a majority of kind of just like we'll do it in a bit of a zenithal but not quite because honestly i don't want to create artificial lighting on the figure uh i want the, uh, because basically when i start taking pictures of these guys uh, i like the scene how i want right and yeah so i'm not looking for huge shifts in value i want it to look cool on the shelf but i also want it to you know look right when i take photos and stuff and i and, and i like the scene kind of thing right so yeah kim that is the way we say orange in norway that's funny orange yeah you guys say orange <laughs> i was just joking <laughs> but if that's the way you guys say it you know cool at least at least now now i know how to say something in in norway <laughs> orange <laughs> that's funny like haha -ha funny not you know Ooh, that's weird <laughs> all right we'll do the backpack first because the backpack kind of is a sacrificial lamb and i think all i want to do is i just want to spray it angles so that i push some of those darker tones yeah and i hit that little spot there's a little sh spoogy spot right there yeah so we're just going to take um some of the red throw it on the mixer throw some thinner on it or in it and then uh, yeah we carry on oh shit damn I dunked the tip of the brush against my table I had to check my needle because <laughs> that would have just brought this painting sesh to an end oh shit I'm running really low on my red damn do I have another red? I don't. <gasps> Uh-oh. Okay, well, we might only get so far. I'm not, I might have to take a run to, to the store later to get some more red. Damn. I didn't realize I was this low already. Oh, well, we got quite a few projects done with this, though. I mean, we did the, the big sister battle. There's quite a bit of red on her. What else did I use this on? I guess just this guy, really. Getting all this guy's, you know, an even coverage on him. Okay. I'm going to throw quite a bit in. I want this really, really thin. There we go. <clears throat> Using the X20A thinner. I'm going to give this a thorough mix. Give that rinse brush or my rinsey thing here. Just give this a nice thorough mix. Again, we could back feed the air into the brush to give this a mix, but I find that's just a little bit messy, and um, especially since we got to be a little bit conservative on the amount of paint we're using. Uh, I don't want to, you know, just have paint just kind of flying around. So yeah. Heretic Scott. For a second, I thought some stoner metal started pl uh, playing, but it was the Vortex Mixer. <laughs> stoner metal? What's stoner metal? I want to hear some stoner metal. What band is considered stoner metal? I'm genuinely curious now. Okay. All I'm doing is I'm spraying at an angle so that the deeper tones are in the recesses. That's all I'm doing here. So when I said I'm pushing back the color, I'm just pushing it back just a little bit. I still want these deeper tones, but I don't want them too heavy. So this spot here, I spray straight across it, and it should give me my um, 
my high points on this great yeah see how it's clearing that up for me a bit I guess you guys can't really see that all that well So really, it's just largely a directional highlight I'm doing. It's, again, it's kind of like a zenithal type of treatment, but not quite. Also allows me to push some of those really intense shadows back a bit. Just so that they're not so intense. Some of the astute viewers may notice that the shine is disappearing from the uh, previous uh, shading phase of the um, golden high flow um, transparent brown. You can see as I'm spraying this really, really thin layer of the red on top, it's actually, because it's a, a matte paint, it's matting down the shine. And so really all I'm concentrating when I'm looking at it is I'm looking at the uh, red values. Anywhere where I know it's going to be metallic, I'm not too worried about what it looks like. Here in this backspace, I'm not too worried about that. But yeah. You see we kind of push that back. You see that line looks a little bit cleaner now. But yeah. That's that. Let's do the torso. The torso here is kind of a funny one because here, let's let's stop a sec. Uh, <clears throat> because that plugs right back into there. No, I guess we can leave that. Just rebuild that sh highlight. In fact, I probably can build the highlight right towards the bottom of the plate. Right? And how that's going to look. Yeah. Yeah, we'll do that. Uh, but up, up, um. There's a band called Druids that's a stoner, stoner rock. Well, stoner rock. I'm familiar with stoner rock. Like, uh, Queens of the Stone Age is considered stoner rock, right? And I loves me some Queens of the Stone Age, so, yeah. Not that I'm a big stoner or anything, but, yeah. transition here. Yeah, just create a little bit smoother gradient of color there.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give that a little bit to dry, but I think that'll fix that plate rip. Clean it up a bit. Me likey. Me likey. Oh, we're starting to run low on red. We're really running low on red. All hands. All hands. All right. I'm not sure what we're calling all hands for, but, you know, whatever. Uh, Heretic Scott. Stoner metal is just heavier and more bass heavy. Well, is is Tool considered that? Because I love Tool, the band, not Penis. <laughs> Although, <laughs> this one's gonna be kind of tricky because I want to spray this just at that spot there. I want to maintain that angle, but I don't want to destroy all that shadow I created earlier. I think that's fine. So really all I'm doing is I'm just being mindful of the direction in which I'm spraying so that it catches, right? And it cleans up. It, yeah, so you can see here how like the shadow and the and the red is reinforced right in right in the sternum spot here before. Remember when uh, what it looked like a moment ago when there was more shadow there and how dark that looked? Now it's you know, the shadow's been pushed back just into the space that I want it. Which is exactly how I want it. I'm just using the natural contours to kind of mask off the corners so I'm just getting just a certain point like see I'm not spraying straight down at the piece I'm angling it just so there and then that way the the spray passes but leaves that shadowy point alone and that's it it's pretty straightforward stuff it's you know airbrushing is not you know not science or <laughs> not 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 mystical i should say i know a lot of people treat it like it's some sort of mystical art but it's not it's pretty straightforward and we're out of red so Yeah, we'll throw a little bit more red in there so that we can continue our work because next I think I'm going to work on the shoulders. Uh, Heretic Scott, I believe it kind of took off in the 90s with Kaya, uh, Caius uh, being one of the OGs that made it become more recognized as a genre. Yeah. And that loves me some Caius. If you look at my Spotify, um, I have an entire playlist of Caius... Queens of the Stone Age, Eagles of Death Metal. Um, somebody else in there, I think. I want to say there's somebody else in that playlist. Maybe not. But yeah. A 
Lots of thinner. We're going through lots of thinner today. Lots. Give us a little mix. Yeah. Yeah, so the goal with using this really thinned out red like this is so that we can slowly push back on some of those shadows that we created earlier. Just because some of them are a little bit intense, you know, like some of them are just a little too broad. I want to push them back a bit and, you know, so that's the whole reason for that. Like here on the helmet, I'm going to spray at an angle where I'm catching just this edge and pushing down the bridge of the face. And it should give me, it should look a bit zenithal, but not quite. That's not the goal. It's just to reinforce the red. So something like this. And all I'm doing is I'm just spraying straight down at the at the piece. Now if I want to if I want to create this highlight back or just keep this shadow here but push the uh, red back a bit more i'm going to aim right kind of for the center of this mohawk thing on his helmet and that should push that sh uh, the shadow back a bit yeah also on the ear the top of the ear cone things yeah just like that so you can see it starts to look a little bit more natural again. Yeah, we're, we're happy with that so far. the space marine head is starting to look kind of proper you can still see the glossiness but that's just from that um raw umber but yeah so far so good the shoulder pads are probably going to take up probably a majority of this color uh heretic scott i started listening to wheel quite a lot they're kind of like tool but a little heavier really not familiar with them. Post a link in the music, uh, in the music area on Discord. I'll check them out. Okay, so like I said before, I'm gonna spray at an angle where I want to preserve that shadowed line in there, but I want to rebuild some of this uh, base tone on the, on these areas. I don't want to kill it completely, but I want to just have it withdraw a little bit. I think also that brown kind of throws my eye off because I left it around the icon there. It, it's visible on the camera, but it's to the eye, it looks light. It looks like, you know, uh, weathering. So like I said, see how it, like it looks really intense initially, but then once it starts to dry a bit more, you can see how the color is getting pushed back a bit. The shadows are getting pushed. And that's all I'm looking for.
Yeah, we're starting to get there. Yeah, we're gonna use up all the red again. Son of a bitch. That last little bit out of the brush, it splattered and it threw a couple little spots of red in there. Son of a bitch. All right. We are going to add more red because we're out. But yeah. What time we at here? Holy camoles, it's nine minutes OT. We better wrap this up soon. I'm not even halfway done yet. Yeah, like I'm like under halfway. But I am almost out of red, which means that I got to hit the store anyway and pick up. I'm going to probably pick up two bottles of flat red just so that I'm not running too low through this project because I'm sure that we will come back and um, use more red, as it were, for, you know, more stuff down the line. Uh, not just this guy, but, you know, more Marines. But yeah. Give this a thorough, thorough mix. Mix in my paint in my cup. Cause I want it to flow nice. Oh. Oops. No, I'm making this. Ah, for fuck's sake. all right <clears throat> carrying on after i think this cup runs out though i think we'll we'll call it a day maybe 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 i'll do more okay once that dries it actually looks a little bit better i want to reinforce some of the red here up by the by the uh, symbol though so we're just gonna spray it right close to the to the thunderbird just like that. Just really build that right up. Spray it at an angle. Yeah, that definitely looks a lot better now. It's not quite as harsh and intense. Uh, I don't know if you recall what it looked like before, but yeah, actually that this corner looks a lot cleaner now. This corner still needs some work, so let's do that. Yeah, because I can see it up on the rim here. We haven't done much here. doesn't look so intense anymore does it I'll do another pass but yeah that looks a lot better it looks kind of blotchy right now just because there's different um there's different drying going on just because the paint's thin but yeah yeah that looks a lot better now in fact now i want to do more to this side i like how that looks better I'm just trying to preserve angles. Yeah, that looks a lot better. A little cleaner, right? I think so. Yeah. 
I can live with that. Like in comparison, here, we'll, we'll compare it side by side of what the other shoulder pad looks like. Let me put the brush over here for a sec. So here's the two shoulder pads, right? So you can see how we're pushing those shadows back a bit. A little less intense, but that's fine because I don't really want intense shadows. Because like I said, when I start taking pictures of this stuff, I don't really want, um, you know, the light fighting with how the subject should look, right? Because typically when we, the way we think of shading and highlighting on miniatures, it's really for um, the miniature, right? And the imagined light source. Whereas when you're taking photographs of stuff, you're using actual light. Does that make sense? I should hope so. <laughs> Getting splooches. Son of a bitch. It's a dry tip. Arg. It's collecting on one of the little. The brush has like these little arms above the needle. And there was like a big droplet. Yeah, see, that already looks a lot better now. Once it dries a bit. Uh, ba -da -ba 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 -ba. Made perfect sense. Imagine that. <laughs> I know. I, 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 I'm even a little bit shocked that that made sense. <laughs> Yeah, that's starting to look a little bit better, eh? Not quite as intense. It's okay if it's like on the um, the icon here. Although, I, yeah, I gotta take care of that right there. Uh, Greenleaf Terrain Studios. Woo, get naked. Um, go right ahead. I don't, you know, I'm not your dad. And um, however you uh, enjoy the show, uh, the stream, uh, feel free. <laughs> uh, hopefully you're in the comfort of your own home while you're doing that, but, you know. I don't know. I guess if you're not, you'll face some sort of repercussion, right? That definitely looks a lot better. I'm, that's closer to what I was envisioning. I just want to fix a little bit more up by this claw up here.
Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. Yeah. That is definitely closer to what I was wanting. Envisioning. Heretic's got damn no glove. We're going raw. Well, I mean, I have my little uh, holy sticks, right? So not a lot of not a lot of spray gets on me. Not usually, anyway. All right. Just a little, a little bit more. I probably should stop while I'm ahead, though. Again, you, you hit that point where it's like, ah, you, you, you're where you want. I, I don't know why you keep messing with it, but yeah, yeah. I better stop right there. <laughs> I'm getting scared. I'm scaring myself here. All right. Uh, what do we got left? We got the arms and the legs. I will try and see how far this little amount. Oh man, it's starting to get cloudy in here. Yeah, I better get. I better quit. What I need is an airbrush booth, is what I need. This, I am going to spray... Ooh, it's kind of tricky. I think I'm going to spray straight down at the hand on the wrist here. On the computer. try and clean up some of these edges here just because their shadow is just a little bit intense Just a little bit. All right, that got a little funny over there too. Almost out. Almost out of the red. But yeah, see how the shadow now looks a little bit more coherent there? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. getting low we're low oh too much 
red got in there. Whoops. A little too much there. That's okay. Because anything we uh, we mess up along the way, we can always correct with some some strategic weathering. All right. Time to flush. Where am I? Pixel Hobo, what airbrush is that? It is a Renegade Chrome from Badger. Just using some of my alcohol rinse to flush out the brush. there oh it's hail boop oh i think my thing's muted still neuter oh, did i come in right at the end <laughs> you you are coming in at, uh, near the end yes you are it's end. okay though maybe we'll we'll sit and chat for a moment while i clean my brush what did you do that i haven't opened the internet explorer yet <laughs> internet explorer no i'm kidding i oh. use google chrome I was gonna say, dude. Good, <laughs> good God, man. Brand loyalty. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Actually, I don't think Internet Explorer is even live because they came out with, uh, was it Microsoft Edge or whatever? Right. They they can change the name all they want. It's still the same shitty browser. <laughs> Uh, Pixel Hobo. Oh, okay. I remember the cups being a little bigger on those, but I guess they made a smaller cup version. Yes. For the Patriot, or for the Renegade Chrome? Yeah. I think there's two cups, I believe. Yeah, I think, the I Patriot, think so. When you go to the, like, the, I don't, I don't know what the actual model is, but it's like the Super Duper Patriot. Um, yeah. I th I'd like to say that they also do an extreme for the Renegade Chrome. Like, there's a Patriot 105 Extreme. And I think there's a Renegade Chrome Extreme. And the Chrome Extreme might have a bigger cup. I don't recall. It's been a while since I've been to Badger's site. Heretic Scott, what other projects do you have in your backlog? I'd personally like to see some more. Necromunda, if you have any. I liked what you did with the Corpse Grinder. Yes, uh, I do have Necromunda. Uh, because I bought the Dark Uprising box, I have that full set of terrain. I also, uh, through the help of... Um, Jabba's left nut. Um, got the uh, tiles for Necromunda, and I've been meaning to um, do a chaos oh, fame. More tiles. I had to think there for a second. What's that? Is there more tiles? Tiles. I had to sit there and think for a second. Well, they're not zone more tiles. Tiles. Like they're just Necromunda tiles. Zone oh, more the tiles. Ones? No, no, no. They're plastic. They're just big. They're like twelve by twelve uh, tiles. They're not the Zomor Talos. Zomor Talos uh, is like from Forge World with the walls already built into the tiles, whereas these are purely blank tiles. They're really cool. Uh, oh, okay. But people have been seeking them out like mad because Games Workshop has not been restocking them and not keeping a steady supply of them going. That's the tiles that... Uh... Oh, no, they're Zomor Talos floor tiles, so... though. Uh, ba -ba -ba. 19, 19. Pixel Hobo. Yeah. I used Badger for years since the 90s, I think. Yeah. I 
can't steal Zone Mortalis, Chris. You just have to now buy the walls separately. <laughs> oh, is that what they consider the Zone Mortalis? Yeah. Because Forge World used to just be... That was the only way you could get Zone Mortalis tiles. Um, they have like your, the tiles have like the big air vents and stuff in them. Yeah, there's yeah there's a bunch of details in them, but they're just blank now. And you have I, to buy the walls separately, and then there's a a gang stronghold you can get for it. That's yeah. just like a bun, like a bunch of barricades and a watchtower and stuff. Right. What did we paint today? Let's see. Uh, I was working on my McFarlane Marine. I was doing all the shading, and then now I was just in the mid process of reestablishing the base color. But I am dangerously low on uh, flat red, so I got to go find some more. Gotcha. But that's okay because we're at the 2.30 mark of the stream, and I am pretty much done for the moment. A sip of coffee, a sip of victory coffee. Oh god, it's cold. Does it smell like victory? And it smells like victory. It's cold. <laughs> it's a little cold. Alright. I'm flushing this brush. Heretics got their not discontinued. What's that? It's, um, you know, you said possibly this, the higher gun model. No, it's, um, it's a problem on Forge World then. Because multiple people including myself, have emailed them about it. It's just that GW is too lazy to make a, you know, back order or specifically, like, out of stock for a long time notification. Yeah, well, they say uh, email you when it comes in stock. Yeah, that doesn't work either. Well, that was it, because the models he's talking about on Forge will say, um, what is it? The one where they can't, where you don't get the option to email, even though their email notification hardly works half the time. Right. But, uh, what's it called? Sold out, no longer available. They're actually, no, they are not no longer available. They are just not going to be restocked for a while. As for multiple emails to GW, because they don't. Uh, Classic GW. Because the, uh, the Death Corps of Creed, like that model, those models still in Forge World will go to that no longer available, but then about a month later they will come back. Like you could buy the Ride Master now if you wanted. Right. Classic GW, yeah. We're mostly cleaned up. <laughs> what color did you paint them? Oh, uh, red. I yeah, it's a flat red. It's uh, Tamaya Flat Red XF7. No thinner. I just based it in that. And then um, I went to brown red, which is X, uh, XF64 from Tamaya. Mm -hmm. Laid that in. It was a uh, similar value as the red, but it gave like this really interesting kind of almost, well, you can see it really well Chris, on did the- Did you kill somebody? Did I kill somebody? No, why? Your, your hands. Huh? Your hands. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah, so I used the brown and I liked how it looks like on the shins. It almost looks like, like rusty dirt or, you know, like dustiness. And so I'm, I basically left that, and, and just because it desaturates the red, because I don't really want the red to be, you know, fire engine red. And so I left that, and then I went in with um, Raw Umber from Golden, who's a transparent color. It's a bit, uh, like if you're using an airbrush or using a brush, it's a bit like um, Agrax Earthshade. It's a similar value, mm -hmm. and it's clear, so it goes on and just gives you those tonal values or tonal changes. Did that in some key places. And then I uh, came back in with the red, really, really thin, 
and then just started to push uh, some of those areas where the shadows were just a little too intense and push those back. And yeah, I'm much happier with how it's looking right now. Uh, it's looking a little cleaner. And yeah, backpack looks really dark, but yeah, it's fine. You see like the grill here on the top of the backpack looks, you know, like it should. Um, yeah, I'm happy with where it's, I'm happy with where everything's going right now fine with so next will be uh i'll probably finish off doing the red i'll probably do it off camera because i gotta go find some more red right now and then um yeah stay tuned because i think we're going to use uh tamia o-range x6 mm -hmm. so if you've ever, if you've never used the o-range color we're going to mix that with uh, the red probably do a 50 50 and then do a little bit of highlighting or probably thin it yeah. down to like to like what would be considered glaze consistency uh and then just kind of uh you know on some key spots lay just a little bit of tonal uh change like for example like on the or um the thruster things on the backpack we just lay a little bit down like that along the top maybe just a little bit on the top part here and that pretty much would be it you know on the chest here probably just spray just a little bit down through the center and just have just a little bit brighter color just a little bit i'm not looking for it's not like um it's not like we would do on a miniature where it's really super contrasty because again the scale of these figures is much larger and i'm also planning yeah. on taking pictures with these and so uh i don't want the shot the artificial shadows and highlights to conflict with how it the a uh, actual light is playing on the surface yeah all right are you gonna put Nick Nixon dings in his armor? Yes, yes, I am. We're gonna weather him when we're when we get to that phase. Um, yeah. So right now, I'm still thinking that the icons will be white. The chest eagle will be white. Mm -hmm. The ribbing and stuff will be black. And a metallic for like the backpack for nozzles you know uh, the gun the gun yeah. itself i'm thinking now more coppers or bronze or both i just i think what i haven't seen anybody do oh what's that you know how in guns in real life are painted black or like coated black or you know some other color not metallic uh -huh. doing that on the gun and then, you know, putting in the uh, scratches and dings and stuff. At least for 40k. Hmm. I've been noticing it. It's always good. I've always just seen bare metal. Mm -hmm. Well, because I'm thinking the like, copper would be really fun. Because have you ever seen, like, heat-tempered copper? How it looks? Oh, are you going to do the, uh, yeah. Like, I'm thinking, like, the end of the gun in a copper. But, like, heat-treated. Mm -hmm. So it looks like, you know, copper that's been heated really high. Or yeah. whatever, it, it has a similar value, right? But I mean, heated copper doesn't, um, it doesn't it go. Doesn't just, yeah, it doesn't. doesn't it's not, do what, uh, yeah, it's not the like same as metal. Steel. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, because steel gets those like rings of like yellow and red and blue when it gets real. Yeah, whereas copper Stuff tends to stay maybe. more blue and um, um, reds and stuff. It doesn't shift into yellows. So yeah, we push those shadows back on the on the arm here. And yeah, it looks a lot cleaner now. So we're just going to continue to do that. Yeah. I like it. I'm happy with where this is going so far. Uh, if I really mess it up, I'll just I'll just trash the whole thing. I'll grab a sledgehammer and just smash the shit right <laughs> out of it. <laughs> just, you know, just, ah, for fuck's <laughs> sakes. <laughs> just it's, it's real quiet, and you just see him throw the room. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Exactly, I just fly right <laughs> off the handle. <laughs> Kim, way the brush tomorrow? Uh, yeah, I'm planning on it. Uh, I have company from out of town, but I am planning on um, doing away the brush tomorrow. Uh, Heretic Scott, I do my chaos dudes with black guns and highlight with metals, brings up the edges and gives it nice weathering. Yeah, well, I mean, again, like for 28 mil. All that stuff works fine. On this scale, it's different, right? I mean, like, yeah. it's it's 
you can afford to leave more bare color on larger scale and it looks good if we treated this entirely like a miniature it would it wouldn't look right um the, sh the shadows would be just too intense the highlights would be just too bright you know what i mean like it just look it would look cartoonish and garish if we had done if we paint this like we do regular miniatures you still can use the same theories but it, it's it's not the same it, it doesn't look the same I have all these miniatures websites open, all my browser from last night. I'm sitting there like, the heck was I doing that? <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel like it was a little bit of like a Wolfman kind of thing where you're just like, what was I doing? Where? Yeah. Well, <laughs> you wake up naked and you're like, you're covered in blood <laughs> and you got like a dead goat beside you or something? Yeah, instead of that though, it's like all these tabs, right? <laughs> all right. No, I remember what I was doing. So, what's new with you? Um, deciding on what I want to paint for a Jessicon. I have a few ideas. I'd paint a miniature. Totally, yes. <laughs> but I want to paint my car. <laughs> yeah, you can paint your car. That's all right. <laughs> no, Nothing wrong with that. Oh. I had a few ideas for stuff, and then... So, yeah, mold. Oh, yeah, Did, uh, were you here for the mold talk? No. So, uh, I'm going to switch cameras real quick here. Um, mold on your palette? No, because I failed twice at doing uh, feathers, sculpting. Oh, the mold. Yeah. I, I thought you meant mold like the, you know, the fuzzy fungus stuff. No, no, no. You and, meant mold as in mold <laughs> Yeah, so I... I um, Kim had suggested using a silicone mold, and I thought that was a good idea because, you know, I'm driving myself bananas trying to sculpt this shit. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, these uh, f the feathers on this particular mold are pretty good scale. Yeah, uh, especially, like, that one top right in the middle. Top? Kind of, like, looks like a talon almost. Here? Or over here? That one? Wait, That's a little wing. Adjust this one. Yeah, this this one's a little wing here. I'm, I'm, I'm going to adjust the camera. Hold on. Just so you can kind of see. If you were uh, in the Discord, you would have seen the pictures, I think. Uh, oh, I'm in the Discord. Doesn't mean I see the pictures. <laughs> uh, gotcha. So, oh, yeah, there we go. Yeah. So the upper right one is a is a wing. Oh, that's a wing. Okay. Yeah, there's a few that are like a wing design. So I'm thinking basically the two, um, the far left middle and the far right middle. Uh, those are good ones. And the bottom left on the screen and second from the middle are pretty good as well. Yeah. And so I'm going to mix up some resin and do that. Now, it also came with um, these other molds, but they're just a little too damn big. I like this one on the left, but... Yeah, it's a little too big. And then these ones here, like, good God, it's like pterodactyl size. <laughs> well, you could maybe hang the one on the left off of his gun. Yeah, well, it's it's pretty big. Um, I care though. Let me see. Oh, just so you can kind of get an idea, like, like these ones here, pretty darn big. This is the gun right beside it. You see it? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they're really big. Yeah. You know. Whereas the one that I'm going to use from the molds, they're pretty darn good size. So, like, here's the mold. Yeah, my brain, the McFarlane stuff seems bigger until you put it next to stuff. And you're like, oh, it's not that big. Yeah, well, like the, like the feather there in the middle, right there, that's actually a pretty good size. Even these ones are pretty darn good. Like these little ones here. And so, yeah. I was... I was looking at 40k stuff last night, and I was like, I could do Eldar, or I could do Guard. And I was like, well, if I do Guard, what do I want to do? I don't want to just do another Cadian stuff. So I started looking at, like, alternate stuff, alternate sculpts, basically. Right. And then I found somebody who does, like, um, 
they do two two alternate guard things. They do basically space Skaven. And what's the other one? Um, they're all dressed up like they're all guardsmen dressed up like pilots. They're all wearing like the uh, bomber jackets and stuff. Oh, I don't know which one that and is. Then there's a company that makes a conversion kit for the Chimera to make it look like one of those like Russian APCs. Mm. So I was like thinking that I was gonna do. Um, either Alpiok or uh, my other Eldar scheme idea, where it's like purples and dark grays with, with like red weapons and stuff. Um, that sounds cool. That sounds cool. It could work. It might work. It could. It might. It might. It might not. <laughs> <laughs> Or it might not, yeah. It might be complete shit. I mean, <laughs> where I'm going with this this uh, McFarlane figure, I mean, like, pff, I'm I'm winging it, you know. To be fair, though, you are safe. It is a space marine. Right. Exactly. Yeah. It is a space marine. There is that. <laughs> <laughs> it's got There's big... already official schemes that are pretty crazy for a space marine. Yeah, mine. Mine actually. Yeah. In in retrospect, mine is pretty tame. Uh, as far as custom color schemes are concerned, because it's just a solid deep red, right? Because the, there's a chapter called like the Celebrants or Celo, Celebrants. The, I don't. Know. The Celebrants. No. <laughs> I, I think it's just a, one of GW's made up words. I don't know. But basically, they start from red at the head, like a red red, like a fire engine red, and they shade to orange to yellow down at their feet. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah. I was initially thinking something like that with black at the feet going up to a red. Mm. But decide against it. <laughs> Obviously. No, I think I want the strong contrast of the red and white. And I think I want uh, for the metallic to be um, like a deep copper. And that way I got an excuse to do, you know, vertigrate in the copper and stuff like that and do some weathering like that. And, you know. Yeah. Excuses for doing stuff. I like having excuses to do stuff. See, I wish I could do that. I just have hobby ADD. <laughs> just like, yeah. Just like, oh, I did this project. Oh, okay. Um, new stuff, new shiny. You get out of the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. Alrighty. Any parting words of uh, advice for anybody out there? You should show up to the stream tomorrow. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe show up tomorrow. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So, I want to thank everybody for tuning in today. Uh, I want to thank everybody who uh, was at Karenski. Subscribe today with uh, the, the Primes. Lunar, behold. Be, or be prepared to behold. Fuck, I can't read. <laughs> Thanks for the follows. Um... I'll see you guys later tomorrow, Saturday, the 4th, Way the Brush, at noon, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's what, minus 4 GMT, I think, for everybody else in Europe and stuff. I'm hungry. I need a break. Plus two, I'm breathing out. Oh, my. Holy shit. Oh, hail boop. Subscribe <laughs> with the primes. Yeah. Thank you. There you go. It's September, 20% off, even though I did it with Prime. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, get 20% off. Well, thank you. It's kind of fun that I'm talking to you while you're doing it. Kind of fun. I don't know. All right. Just kind of fun. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, folks. I'll see you guys later. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one and tune in for the next episode where I continue the work. I think we'll begin the highlighting process. Hopefully, maybe, should be, kind of. I don't know. We're having fun though. We're having fun with this project so far. Hopefully you are having fun as well. I didn't realize he sculpted a bear claw on his left shoulder. Yeah, on the left shoulder. Yeah, yeah, bear claw. Because that's going to be the squadron marking. The bird icon is the chapter marking. Oh. Yeah, it's a Thunderbird. 
Oh, yeah. I was here when you... Did you come up with a name for him? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Come on, I need, I need you to hit me with that chapter one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Thunderbirds Ho? <laughs> no, fuck. Okay. All right. Dun, 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 dun. I need music for this. You you give me, sing me a song. Uh. Oh man, come on! Any song, god damn it! I don't know. I'm putting you, on, I'm putting you on the spot. Yeah, putting me on the spot. Uh, I'm gonna do the Looney Tunes thing, but I don't remember how it does it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, come on! It's got to be something in your wheelhouse, man. Something that you know that you know. Uh, fuck. Put me on the spot. <laughs> Peer pressure. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's get the hell out of here.